that that's a, a really good place to work. So one of the things that I used to do, uh, so I'll back up a little bit. When I first moved to Halifax, I transferred from Acadia University to go to Dalhousie University to be closer to my girlfriend at the time. Uh, she immediately told me that she was moving to Ontario, um, which was really awesome to hear. Um, and so I was in Halifax and she was in Ontario. Uh, luckily, she eventually became my wife. But um, at the time, I was like, oh, God, I all of a sudden, like in the Valley, I didn't need a job, really. I, I lived with family. I went to Acadia. And so all of a sudden, I was like, OK, I need I need a job. So I, I ended up getting three jobs. I don't I worked think that I knew. Balance. I don't think that I knew that you were from the valley, or that you. Like... I, I am. So it, it actually is a weird sort of story. I, I grew up in the Annapolis Valley. I lived there until I was in grade five. My mom got a job that caused us to move all around Nova Scotia. So between grade five and grade seven, I lived in Wolfville, Digby, Yarmouth, Liverpool, Anaganish, and Halifax. Wow. Uh, in about a two and a half year span. Um, settled in Halifax and then really wanted to go back to Acadia. Um, I, I really do love the Valley. Um, and so I decided I wanted to go back to Acadia when I went to university and, and then moved back to Halifax and have, have basically been here more or less ever since. Um, but when I, when I was working, so I was working in the mornings, working for Staples, I would then go to classes for the day, like for the afternoon. I'd work for Statistics Canada in the early evening, and then I would be a bouncer at the Split Crow until like three o'clock in the morning. And so because of that, I sort of convinced myself like, oh, I'm really awesome at multitasking and I'm really great at not having sleep. And I'm really like amazing at being able to do all these different things all at once. And then when I started running my business, I was like, oh, like, you know, I, I can start work at eight o'clock at night and and go ahead because I basically just lied to myself. I was like, okay, whatever I have to do, I'll just tell myself that I'm really good at that. <laughs> and it, it makes you feel sort of better to be like, oh yeah, no, everything's going great. No, you were describing me I right was... now. Like <laughs> you were describing, <laughs> right? you're describing well, my describing current people, life. Like we, like we a hundred percent do this. And it's fair because it's really hard to say to yourself, like, I'm not good at what's happening right now or, this is not an ideal situation because it makes you feel shitty. So we, we sort of tell ourselves like, oh, everything's fantastic. And so the way it sort of came to light for me that things weren't going super well was actually when I was writing my book, um, which actually hopefully will be out in the next, well, depending on when they hear this, it might already be out. Otherwise, it'll be out soon. But when I was writing my book, which was a book about time management, productivity, goal setting, etc., I was tracking how 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 much I could write at any given time. And so what I found was that my words per hour from like 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. was like 2,000 words per hour. I could write like literally just hammer out so much work. And then as the night went on, it would go to like 1,000, 800, 400. And then from like 11 to 12, all of a sudden I found out I was writing like 200 words per hour, uh, which basically... Like it's, it's, that's really slow. That's an anemic and so pace, yeah. It, it is, it is just like, and there were times where I would like wake up and be like, oh, I've just been holding down the R key for, you know, a paragraph and I have to go back and kind of do it because you're just passing out. And so I realized like, okay, I'm, I'm not good at this, this time. Like these times are not good for me. And it's a waste of my time to stay up an hour late or two hours late or three hours late and and do not very good, not very efficient work when I could sleep an extra two or three hours or in my case, watch Netflix for an extra two or three hours and and actually get my work done at times when I'm really functionally uh, alert. So. I sort of came to this realization and I started reading a lot of productivity books, a lot of time management books, started following a lot of people that were really into this. And I started tracking a lot more of what I was doing and how, how successful I was being at certain things. And when you, when you actually start to look at numbers, um, I know you, you've been doing some accounting lately and actually I, that was actually originally what I was going to be was an accountant actually. Um, that's what I was, that's what I was originally going to university to do. And I, I really love numbers because you can make them do lots of things, but in the end, if you read them correctly, there is a right answer. Yeah. Um, and that's what I found from, 
from, from tracking my life is, okay, well, I can say this and I can say that, but when I really sit down and I go, you're only getting five and a half hours sleep and you're only working this many hours and the pace that you're working at is only this, then you start to realize that things have to, have to change in some way. And so that's been sort of my real focus over the last little while is trying to be super productive. Um, I've been, there's an app that I use called Blinkist. So like Blink and then IST. And it's an app that actually provides you uh, condensed audiobooks um, where you're basically listening to the main points of audiobooks. Oh, yeah. I think I so heard like about that on, and, um, on Pod Save America or, or, you know, one of the crooked media shows. Yeah. It's amazing. Like yesterday, I literally listened to 10 books on time management in a two and a half hour span. Um, and there, it's all really actionable. Like it's not just sort of a review. It's like, okay, here's exactly what you need to do based on these things. And one of the ones that I, that I recently listened to was about the 80, 20 rule, which is the idea that 20% of what you do is responsible for 80% of the actual net gains. So like, you know, for most of us, if you're working at a job, 80% of your day only contributes to 20% of the productivity and vice versa. So for me, it's been really identifying the things that are actually uh, helping me and the things that are actually working and then either cutting the rest of the stuff out or modifying those, those things so that I can sort of get the same amount of gain from them. Nice. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, like the thing that I really love about listening to your show is like, I mean, first of all, you're my friend and I like hearing you. Um, <laughs> The other thing I really like about it is that you um, you are introducing me to topics that I wouldn't necessarily have uh, been introduced to otherwise. Now, like I'm not like a hundred percent your your target audience, I think, but like you definitely run the gamut of like if you're a small business owner, like the, these sorts of uh, interviews are going to help you or these sorts of topics that you, that you cover are going to help you. If you're, if you're just interested in local businesses, like these are going to be interesting, uh, interesting people for you to listen to. Um, and then like, it's just, it's a nice sort of slice of, of all these sorts of things. And like, um, uh, like that in particular, and that's why I brought it up with you, the, the, the idea that, you know, you kind of just have to embrace the fact that, you know, sometimes you suck at things. Uh, and so, <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it, that actually like really spoke to me because like I'm in, I'm in school right now. Uh, and then I'm working on top of that. Like that's, and that accounts for, you know, without considering homework, which is just starting to ramp up for me, that accounts for 50 hours a week. Plus I have this show. Right. Plus I have a girlfriend. Plus I, you know, sometimes see my friends like you know it's just it's it's a lot of stuff so to just try and um and actually capitalize on on the time when i know that i'm going to be the most productive has been uh something that i've really taken away from from you and from your show so it's been really great um so uh you well, and just, I... if i if i can quickly say something about that actually yeah. one, of, one of the things like when you say like you know and try and make time for my friends and time make time for my girlfriend I actually recently have realized like those things are way more important than we really give them credit for. So, um, you know, a prime example is every Thursday night uh, I play board games and or Dungeons and Dragons with a group of, of close friends. Um, and and I look forward to it all week. And I know that I have that time set aside. I know that on Thursdays from you know, 8 p.m. to about 11 p.m., this is what I'm going to be doing. And the concept of, A, knowing that I'm going to be doing something really awesome, and B, knowing that that's time I cannot do work has actually helped me immensely in terms of being like, okay, well, now I know this is work time because I know I don't have that other time to do work. And so really making time for those fun things. Like, like I say, I'm on my way now to a hockey game. Um, I play in an adult beginner league because I didn't play hockey growing up and I just started playing a few years ago. Um, I am literally terrible at it, but once a week, it is my opportunity to sort of get out, do something fun, skate around, be with people. Um, and I think that we, we place way too much emphasis on our work and we don't place nearly enough emphasis on understanding how much 
our play can actually revitalize us and, and make us much more productive. No, absolutely. Like you had, um, you've had, you've covered this a couple times on your show, like the whole, the, the notion of, um, of hustling and, um, you know, to, to rethink that and reconstruct, to contextualize that to like, okay, what are you hustling for? Um, has been, uh, has been really eye opening for me too. Like, and it, and it, it keeps me on track because, you know, um, up until recently, like I wasn't actually doing things in school, um, that were directly linked with my core program. Um, I've just recently started getting into the actual sort of law part of uh, my paralegal program. And um, mm-hmm. like keeping in the back of my mind, like, okay, why am I doing this? It's because there's an end goal. And like keeping that goal, it's basic goal setting stuff, but it's, it's you know, right. re- recontextualizing, rethinking about that in, in a different way that helped me sort of get through those moments where it's just like there's anything in the world that I want to be doing more. Um, you know, anyhow, um, just, I know that's just me sort of, you know, verbally, uh, patting you on the back for being great. (laughs) I Um, like this. This show has been awesome for my ego. So it's uh, it's good. (laughs) Um, so, uh, you and I, uh, this, this is probably going to go up, uh, just into the new year, probably, uh, second week of the new year. So, uh, you and I met, um, you and I met through mutual friends, uh, and, uh, through watching uh, professional wrestling. That is correct, yeah. Um, you're actually one of the few people that I've had over to the apartment to watch professional wrestling with. It was uh, me, you, and, uh, and Sean McCabe and Sean, watching, yeah, yeah. Uh, watching Mania a couple years ago, I guess it was now. Yeah. Um, so uh, with, uh, with, the, with that in mind, we're, uh, we're coming up to WrestleMania season. Um, yeah. We're coming up to my favorite, personally my favorite pay-per-view of the year, the Royal Rumble. I don't know how much you're watching these days. I don't know how up on it you are. I know that I pretty much only watch the pay-per-views and kind of keep a, keep an eye on what's going on elsewise. What uh, what are you seeing for the Rumble? Who do you think who do you think's got it? I honestly, I, to be totally honest, I really only watch wrestling with you guys, um, and, and so I, I haven't like I haven't watched it in I, probably the last time I watched wrestling was with you, oh, honestly. Wow. Um, so I tend to follow it just like if I, if I hear what's happening with things, I'll, I'll sort of follow things online. But I, for me, like honestly, watching wrestling was just actually getting to hang out with you and with Luke and, and Will and those kind of guys. Um, and, and so I, I honestly haven't watched every, and every time that I showed up at one of these events, I literally was just like, Oh, okay. Um, I know, I know some of these people, like I know some of these people for sure. Um, but I honestly haven't watched at all. I, I, I would like to sort of get out and watch some more soon, but, uh, but I, I, yeah, I I haven't watched it at all. I, I grew up, I grew up watching a ton of wrestling in what I will describe as like the original heydays of wrestling. So, you know, the, the Hulk warrior macho man, like, you know, the sort of the beginnings of it as a pop culture phenomenon. Um, and then I stopped watching for a long time got back into it a brief in a, for a brief time in sort of the late nineties, early two thousands stopped watching again. And then, and then sort of fell back into it. Um, from literally a, a weird chance encounter with Luke. Um, I'll sort of share this because it, it's sort of, I, I know I'm just flat out not answering the question, but no, that's fine. I, I'll share this because it's, it's interesting to me is that, the way that I came to, to actually be friends with Luke and thus friends with you and, and friends with a few other people was that Luke knew someone who had had his Xbox games, uh, his like Xbox 360 games. His girlfriend had broken up with him and like taken all his games, but left his uh, Xbox with him. Um, and he sort of said this like call to action online of like, if anyone has old games they're not using, um, you know, my, my friend would really love, you know, some games for cheap or for free or whatever. And so I, um, I was just like, look, like I have like the last generation of hockey, the last generation of football. I've got a few other, you know, gears of war, that kind of stuff that I don't really play. You know, if you want to come pick them up, you know, they're, they're your friends. And so as, as sort of payment for that, Luke actually went through, um, and I just literally knew him as like 
I think I followed him because I 